Hello, my name is Carl. I'm Two Echo Zero Echo Zulu Tango. I'm here today with a good buddy here, GYWHP, Grandad One WHP. We've got two more visitors arriving soon. I'll introduce those in the video as they arrive. So we're here for an overnight uh, operation in the the bunk barn. There's the bunk barn. Uh, we're going to be operating on low band, so um, 160 meters, 80 meters, 40 meters, uh, with a, a homebrew, very very big dipole, homebrew dipole. Uh, we've got some new radio, uh, so there's a new radio we'll introduce in the video as well. Uh, we've got some new faces to introduce. There's a bit of cooking as well going on today, so it's all happening in this video. So uh, stick along and uh, let's have some fun. Yeah, good afternoon. The name here is Carl. Uh, currently setting up a portable station in the Peak District. We're going to do some overnight activity on uh, 40 metres and uh, 2 metres here. Uh, about 3 miles from Leek in Staffordshire. Uh, you're coming through a good strong radio 5 uh, but I'm using a military radio so I don't have any meters on the radio but it sound it sound it sounded like a 59 59 here I've had to take the bottom section off it just yeah, wouldn't so, quite yeah. fit yeah, so Slim Jim, we, we, we're not going to use the, uh, the, um, the 2000. Right, we've got Jacob. Hello. Hello, that's the third member. Uh, and we've just, between the three of us, put up the DX Commander. Uh, so we're running this as well tonight. So we've got 40 and 80 metres on that. And it's a, it's a fair bend, it goes up. Obviously, what goes up comes down. So that's over there as well. So uh, that's the uh, the DX setup. Uh, we're going to just uh, spread these radials out in a bit, but it's all coming together nicely. Right. So this is a uh, like a 4G repeater. Um, so this uh, uh, this is the omnidirectional. This goes inside the building. Yeah. So J this is Jacob's um, responsibility. He's actually reading the instructions, so um, that's a rarity in, for an amateur radio uh, group. So this one then is the internal one then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, external, ex external, external, internal, external, okay. Um, so, coax, very long coax, because it needs to be minimum 50 metres apart between uh, each antenna. And then we have the uh, central unit um, that can tell us what the uh, signal strength is of the receive and the transmit okay what could go wrong right so um we've actually snapped the dx commander we had the 80 meter uh, inverted aisle pulling the uh, the pole too much that way and it snapped so we put a uh, fix in the pole and we're just running the uh, 40 meter um, um vertical so uh, we're just on 40 now so uh, hopefully later we'll be able to get up uh, a dipole which is uh, 135 meters each 135 feet each leg so one leg will go all the way over there another leg will go maybe over there somewhere and try and get on there uh, some sort of low band later on hopefully so we've almost got ourselves up and running it's time to go inside and uh, warm up a little bit it's getting a bit chilly and uh, the sun's going down now so the temperature's dropping right just started to take shape now so we've got the ts2000 uh we've got the what's the um tuner it's an mfga it's an old one it's a i think it's a 986 i'm not sure it oh it's there on the under the meter Okay, well, I can't read that, but the camera... 986. Okay. Lovely. Roller coaster, three kilowatt tune, a lovely... Ace. So we'll, uh, we'll run HF on that. Uh, if we want to run it two metres, we can do it on my little um, one there. Uh, almost getting ready to do some uh, cooking in a bit. Uh, my, little, my little kitchen. 
something like that. We did a reveal. And here we have the newest addition to the family. It's the Icom IC7200. So hopefully we'll have a we'll have that on the air later on as well. Um, let's see what that sounds like. Uh, and then we'll do a video a bit later on, maybe in a couple of weeks, in more detail on this. Get this out on, on the field. Um, so, lovely. Right, well we're getting there. Um, so, what's the verdict on the, the humongous doublet that you've built? Absolutely shite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you reckon then, Jacob? We're getting there. Up nicely, yeah. We're yeah. getting there. Yes, yes. Nice, We've got yes. Tom now in the house. Oh, Hi guys. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're here. Um, we're actually going to get a video out of this one because we're not drinking whiskey yet. Right. So it's always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've got the um, for two meters. We've got the Cougar um, plugged in, and then we've got the TS two thousand for the moment um, running on the DX Commander vertical because when we plugged in the doublet we, we just were not happy with it maybe because it is so low to the ground that it's not picking up any um, near near vertical um stuff uh whereas on the vertical on the vertical antenna we're actually now getting some signals coming in so we're gonna just start getting ourselves organized get some contacts in and then uh, we'll tidy up the little kitchen area and uh, start just to get some food on the go for later but we're getting there it's, we're tidying up it's looking a bit better now than it was earlier <laughs> and then, uh, yeah we'll bring you back when we started to get some contacts in antenna one on the radio yes this one the back to front okay so the radio is not going to change it's no one right so um, we're just trying to solve the problem with the doublet and we think it might be something to do with the tuner itself. It's not switching over when you switch the balance line. So we've brought the balance line into a four to one balance and at the back of that we're going to bring in um, a feed line, a coax into the back of the tuner and hopefully that might solve it. Theoretically, we'll find out in a few minutes. Mike Zero, Kilo Papa Radio Portable. <laughs> right, okay, well, while the chaps are sorting out their antenna, we're going to have, um, tonight I'm doing chicken, um, soy and ginger. Uh, we'll a little bit of chilli. So we're having chicken, soy, ginger, we've got uh, bean sprouts um, and then we've got pak choy. So it is, it's not It's not a stir fry because um, very rarely can we get things hot enough to do a stir fry but we're doing um, a nice um, healthy um, chicken and soy ginger um, tonight. So the plan is um, I'm going to Get, soften the um, onions, chuck the chicken in, we're going to put a little bit of um, fire spice, normally I'd use um, star anise and uh, a clove but um, it's difficult to fish that out so I'm using some fire spice. So once we've actually got the chicken and the onion working uh, I'm going to add the soy, uh, the fire spice, get that heated up and then when it's getting really close to being cooked I'm going to chuck in the crunchy veg I'm going to chuck in the um, uh, bean sprouts we've got uh, water chestnuts there so um, cook, start us off first brown everything down with some spice and then start add the soy um, and the um, crunchy veg uh, and then we're going to drop in just a little bit and we're going to drop in a little bit of uh, lemon uh, lime juice as well just to give it a little edge as well so uh, yeah we're waiting for these onions to um, soften down a bit alright so can we explain to the viewers what's actually going on now uh, we're trying to make a radio. the V2000 radial by turning it around and cutting a thread in it so we're getting a, a brand new no, thread that doesn't look 
No, so we need to go a bit deeper. Tightening, yeah. Let's go for an M4. And then we'll have a new radio. Perhaps it's the next the one down. Yeah, I'm going to go for an M4. <coughs> right, so we're, we're trying out the uh, Yaesu 450. Yep. Um, and this is with the... We've had to repair the DS command because it dropped down a few meters. So the um, TS2000 is running two meters at the moment. It's been turned down, so. So we've just set in T. So we're. We're just tidying up and then we'll actually um, settle into a bit of radio. Um, it's a bit chaotic in here, so uh, Paul's just getting his, all these cuddly toys out. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for the big sleep. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get some radio going. Last night was uh, more of an experimental night on the different types of antennas. We were forever in and out of the uh, the barn in the dark, uh, fixing antennas because uh, we managed to break the the X Commander. It was our fault. We actually put on uh, an inverted L. It really gave it some stretch over to uh, the cars over there, and it snapped the pole. Um, I don't know if we can see there, but on on the pole. We've, uh, it's been gaffer taped back, so we managed to get onto 40 meters on the DX. Um, on the bracket, we have the super long uh, doublet. Um, we got a couple of contacts on um, low band. <clears throat> there was a WAB contest on. Um, we got a couple of contacts in, but um, for low band and even for 80 meters it's quite close to the ground so uh, that was it it was quieter than we'd hoped it would be um, and then during the dark we replaced the Slim Jim with the V2000 as well but the V2000 had to be the radials had to be tapped because the um, uh, it, it needed fixing so we, we just happened just happened to have a, a, a tap set on us um, so that's been uh, fixed and we managed to get a number of contacts in on two meters as well so a, a lot of fumbling about in the dark it's a bit like a first date really um, lots of fumbling about in the dark and we managed to get somewhere by the end of the uh, the night um, <clears throat> we had a play around with uh, three radios um, so we had the Yesu 450 um, we used the uh, the Camwood TS2000 and then the um, the latest addition to my collection which is the ICOM IC7200 uh, all th three of them great radios uh, all got their different qualities between them um, <clears throat> what we did discover is that the the TS2000 because there's, there's so many menu options on the front panel because it's quite dark in there, it's quite dark when you're doing these sort of um, uh, this sort of portable activation when you've got lots of buttons and lots of dials on the front of a panel 
it's really difficult to see what you're doing. Um, the so the Camwood um, TS two thousands was fiddly to use. Great radio, but really fiddly. The Yesu um, less options. Um, really good um, for operating. Uh, receive pretty good, um, but then when we switched over onto the IC seven two hundred, it got the real sort of blend of um, really simple to use. Uh, but all three of us, well four of us, actually as soon as we heard the radio and we, we heard some of the stations coming through, the sound quality, the receive quality, was absolutely wonderful. So um, morning. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll once we get a bit more light in there, we'll go back in and actually just get a bit more of the uh, of the icon on video. But uh, that's the morning update. Uh, it's time for uh, a cup of tea and uh, some breakfast as well. Five four one DG. Your five nine five four one four. Five four one four. Five nine. Zero one five. One nine. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Leave me zero five kilowatt thousand five K. Contact. Number plate. Let's take that out. So, uh, defend Land Rover Defender. Nice wheels as well. Look at that. <laughs> and what radio have we got in here then? It's an uh, ICOM 7000. Oh, okay, yes, okay. With the automatic tuning on the. Yeah, we'll have a look at that. I'll actually get a video on that. That's full tuning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <Sounds> scary. <laughs> <laughs> that would make him jump a bit, wouldn't it? So this is called the Target Tuner and it's an automatic SWR sensing tuner for a screwdriver antenna. So the antenna goes in here and this thing senses the SWR okay. and then it obviously goes into the radio which is here. Yeah. So on the, on the box, the control box here, I can choose to tune using either up and down as per normal. Yeah. Or I've got memories in here, so it knows what frequency you're on. It goes to a pre-tuned memory or yeah. nearest to that frequency. Or um, you can do something called auto SWR tuning. Right. So we're just taking down. Oh, that's so bright. We're just taking down the uh, antennas now. Uh, the doublet we're taking down. We realised that uh, part of the doublet was um, making contact with a a like a metal. Uh, netball stand last night, so that was probably one of the reasons why the uh, the doublet wasn't working very well. Uh, it was so dark we we couldn't actually get around to checking the full length of it. So uh, uh, that's probably why I got a poor performance on the doublet. Um, the uh, the V2000 worked out really well for us. Um, uh, Paul's just taking that down now. Tom's just taking down the the doublet. Uh, and I'll just take down the DX Commander, which uh, surprisingly, with the uh, the fix, the gaffer tape fix, is held up really well. So it's uh, it's took the repair quite well. But uh, yeah, we managed to get some uh, get some decent contacts on 40 meters. We've got a few US stations on on 40, uh, and there was a uh, contest on European contest. So we gave away a few points on that. So uh, all in all, it was a good night, a good, a good sort of gathering, uh, played around with different radios and uh, spending uh, hours outside in the freezing cold and in the dark, uh, fixing antennas. What better way could you spend a Saturday night? But uh, okay, right, I'm going to go now, uh, finish off these jobs and uh, I look forward to the uh, next video. So bye for me and bye for Tom and bye for Paul and the dog behind us. Bye-bye for now.